Did you uh, know Paul Dante's well? I administered the last rites to him. Ah, oh, then he he died with a clear conscience. His death, I do assure you, Monsieur Cadrousse, was utterly wretched. But very few customers on that fly-bitten and dusty road outside Marseille ever stopped to hear it. May I ask what it was killed him? Prison killed him. That he survived as long as he did was a miracle in itself. Habits one picks up. Now, fly away. <sighs> Perhaps you might say a prayer for Dante's. Let us look a little closer at the kindly, somewhat grizzled face of Abbe Busoni. You see how the Lord only punishes the good. I believe the Lord only punishes the wicked. And perhaps we may find features with which we are already acquainted. Well, there I would have to disagree with you. I take Dantes. Was Edmund Dantes good? I believed him to be a criminal. Oh, there's a lot I could tell you about that young man. Things that happen. There are. But honour demands silence. <coughs> oh, excuse me. You knew his father, I believe. Oh, old Louis Dantes. My poor heart breaks to even hear his name. How that man suffered. Petitioning the magistrates every day for some news of his son receiving nothing. Awful. Awful. He died of typhoid, I believe. Typhoid? He died of starvation. Starvation? Sure you weren't acquainted with old Dante's father? You say the old man petitioned every day? Stood on the steps outside the Crown Prosecutor's office. But Monsieur de Villefort would not receive him. De Villefort. In fact... The name is anguish. De Villefort denied even interviewing Dante's on the night of his arrest. Can't have been anybody else, though, can it? He was the man in charge. And is this Monsieur de Villefort still in Marseille? Oh, went straight to the top, did de Villefort. No flies on him. Made Crown Prosecutor of Paris. Crown Prosecutor? Yeah, make no mistake. This is a very powerful man we're talking about. Made his name hunted down Bonapartists. Revolutionaries. Petrus! Yes, my butterfly. How many times have I said about drinking with a customers? But we don't have customers, do we? We never have customers. Now come down and talk with us, why don't you? Who's this, then? Allow me to present my wife, Matilde. Enchanted. Madam, I am the Abbey Bassoni, and I am an acquaintance of an old friend of your husband's. Who's drunk would that be, then? <laughs> now, now. His name was Edmund Dantes. Dantes? That's the boy that disappeared. The one you shh, said... Shh, 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 shh. Come and sit down. You knew him. Speak your business, Mr. Priest. Wine! Why about the fly? Wine. Shut up! Well... It was always Dante's avowed belief that he was wrongly accused and imprisoned. He spoke of it many times, and I must confess that I came to believe him. I'd like you to leave, Abbe. Uh, of course. I won't have that talk in my in. Allegations! I won't have it! I wasn't implying that you had any hand in it. There, there, there are issues surrounding the case. Issues, Abbe Bassoni, the delicate issues. Of course, I quite understand there are sensitivities. I assume then that you won't be interested in what Dantes has bequeathed to you. Bequeathed to A us? A pleasure talking to you, well, Monsieur uh, Cadrousse, uh, Madam. What, what, what did Dantes leave us? I thought you wanted me well, to... Well, can't have been much, can it? Can't it? Glances. Curious, avaricious glances are exchanged between husband and wife. Glances the Abbe does not fail to note. For a few years, Dante's cared for a fellow prisoner who was incarcerated in the same cell as him, Lord Wilmore, an Englishman released after the collapse of the Republic and the restoration of King Louis. God save him! Quite. In gratitude, Wilmore left young Dante's this. What is that? Is that a... Uh, is this, this some sort of joke? I assure you it is not. Then what is it? It is what it looks like. Why, it looks like a diamond ring. The stone alone is worth 75,000 francs, I believe. And it was Dante's last wish that I sell it and divide its value five ways. A fifth to your good self, Monsieur Cadrousse. <gasps> A fifth to Dongla, who served with him upon the Ferrand, another to Fernand, the Catalan fisherman, another to his beloved fiancée, Mercedes, and a last fifth to his dear departed... Excuse me. To his dear departed father, Louis Dantes. 
But since I now learn that old Dante's is dead, then its value will have to be divided into four and shared amongst his remaining trusted friends. What do you say, monsieur? But at the inn of the Pont du Gard, there is only an astonished silence and the creak of a long neglected sign. I say there are things that you should know about these so-called friends of poor Edmund Dantes. Things? Bolt the door, wife. The inn of the Pont de Gare is closed for the rest of the day. You mind if I uh, take a closer look at that ring? With pleasure. Oh, and you wouldn't be lying to us, father. <laughs> Abbe Bassoni's a man of God, my butterfly. And I won't have him insulted with insinuations. Not while he rests beneath my roof. Now bolt the door. But I must tell you, in all seriousness, Abbe Bassoni, that the men of whom I'm about to speak are powerful, powerful people now. These friends of Dante. Very powerful. Do you understand? I'm not sure that they I... They could crush us. Easy as you could have crushed that fly. I see. So, where to begin? Where to begin? Light gleams now in the eyes of the innkeeper Cadruz. I suggest the beginning. A light as bright as diamonds, glittering deliciously in a flame. Night before Dantes was arrested, we was on in this bar, just off the quayside, the marionette. There was me, Dongla, and the Catalan fisherman, Fanon. Go on. Of course, we're going back 15 years here, but I recall that night clear as if it was yesterday. Dongla had just returned from three months at sea with Dantes, and he had a right thirst on him. But the way I remember it, it was Fanon who said, Captain. <laughs> Old Morel made Edmund bloody Dantes captain of the Pharaoh. Tell the world, why don't you? That's not right, Dongla. That's out of order, that is. You deserve captain, and I don't care who knows it. Dantes is a good man. He'll do well. To Dantes. To Dantes. Dantes. Always bloody Dantes. Did you see him in Mercedes on the quayside? Bloody Romeo and Juliet. He's only been away three months. Me. I've been at her side, day after day, waiting for something, anything, some sign of affection. I even sing to her. So does a sweet little pussycat. You want to take this outside? Hey. Will you stop making a spectacle of yourself, Fernand? Well, I love her. I love her. And I'd sooner be captain of the Pharaoh. But we can't have everything in this life. Pass a bit more at wine, Maria. It's only because you have never loved her that you can be so callous. The only thing you want to do is get inside them pretty petticoats. I seen the way you look at her. Naughty, naughty for now. Another word and I'll cut your drunken throat, Cadrus, I will. Still, I do feel bad about one thing. And what's that? Protecting a traitor. Not doing my duty to the king. What are you talking about? Dantes has a letter. Don't know who it's addressed to exactly, but two days shy of getting back to Marseille, he decides to drop anchor at Elba. See the Emperor. You saying Dantes is plotting to bring Bonaparte back? I'm saying that I don't feel right about knowing what I do. As a loyal and true subject of His Majesty. That's why I wrote this. For the attention of the Crown Prosecutor, Monsieur de Villefort. Quietly, man. Jesus. Don't look like you're writing. Because I disguised it, stupid. Just read. For all the attention of the Crown Prosecutor, Monsieur de Villefort, regarding Edmund Dantes, first mate of the Pharaon, arriving today, 24th of February, 1815, at Marseille, Dantes holds a letter addressed to a member or members of the traitorous Bonapartist committee in Paris. Incontrovertible proof of his guilt will be made when the letter is found upon his person. Dantes may be discovered at his father's house or aboard the Pharaoh. Oh my, Dongla. You can't send that. It would destroy him. Why not? For no. Maybe it does go a bit far, Dongla. Ah, 
You're right. You're both right. I'm, I'm sorry I wrote it. Pass us that candle and I'll, I'll burn the note right now. Wait, wait. What? Just scrunch it up. Like this? Exactly like that. Now chuck it away. Done. You don't want to leave that thing lying about in here. Anyone could pick it up. Is that a fact? Have another drink, Kudrus. On me. What about the note? What about what? The note. Oh. It's nothing for you to worry about, Kudrus. In fact, as I recall, you never saw any note, did you? And with that, Dungla and Fanor walked out of the bar, but... But... Night has wrapped its cloak about the scuffed old table, and only a solitary candle... But it was all a ruse. Gutters. Because no sooner had Fanon and Dongla made it look as if they'd left the bar, then back comes Fanon to retrieve the note and deliver it straight to the authorities. To De Villefort. You saw this. I was out in the alley, wasn't I? Taking myself a moment, if you know what I mean, dear Abbe. And you heard... Everything. Did you get the letter back, Fernand? I did, Dongla. I did. Oh. What do we do about Kedrus? Kedrus is a thief and a drunk. There's nobody going to take his word over ours. Perhaps he should have himself an accident. And draw attention to ourselves. Think, Fernand, think! All right, all right. No need to say it like... You're clear, Fernand. Clear about what will happen as soon as this letter is delivered. The consequences. Dantes will be arrested, Dongla. Dantes will be arrested and more than likely thrown in jail for treason. Then that will be an end to him. And you can live with that. If it means you get to be captain of the Pharaoh and I marry Mercedes, then... And nobody must ever know. Won't be me that opens his mouth. Then deliver the letter to the prosecutor's office. Why can't you go? Because I might be recognised, dummy. Who are you calling a dummy? Will you please just get a grip on that temper of yours? Now go. And did he go? Of course he did. Young Dantes was arrested at his wedding feast with Mercedes. Guards just marched right in, took him off to who knows where. But there's been a mistake. That's what they all say, Dantes. But I don't know what I'm supposed to have done. Oh, no. oh. Save it for the Crown Prosecutor. Now get on your feet, Mercedes! Mercedes! And that was the last I heard of him, until you showed up here this evening. And Fernand and Dongla, what became of them? Fernand joins the army, doesn't he? Rises high, decorated. Bags himself the title of the Commander de Morcerf. Very nice, thank you. Commander de Morcerf. And Dongla is now an investment banker. And it's Baron Dongla, thank you very much. One of the richest men in Paris, they say. And very powerful. They both are. That's why we must be cautious, discreet. Then Edmond Dantes was betrayed both by Commander de Morcerf and Baron Dongla. On Jesus' blood, all I say here tonight is true. Then you were right, Abbe Faria. Right about everything. What? My husband is a lot of things, but a liar he is not. Thank you both for your candor. If you would bring me my hat, Monsieur Cadrus, uh, of course. Uh, uh, aren't you forgetting something, um, Abbe Sainé? Uh, forgive me, my dear lady. Uh, there is just one more question I have. And that is? Mercedes, Dante's fiance. did she not wait for him? She waited for years, didn't she? The poor girl's heart was quite broken. Yeah. For two years, she resisted Fanon's advances, petitioned the court until... Until? She accepted, finally, that her Edmund was never coming back and was most likely dead. That's when she married Fanon. After everything he did to Dante's? Yeah, don't suppose she had any idea, did she? Mm. They've even got a boy, I think. Uh, oh, well, Albert. Albert. Mm. Quite the little prince, I hear. <laughs> I see. Well, then, what can I say? Monsieur Cadrus, madame. Oh, oh. <laughs> May Dante's diamond bring you all the happiness you deserve. Oh. <laughs> and Baron Dongla, Commander Fernand. Are not worth further discussion. Oh. <laughs> Bless you, Abby Bassani. Bless you. Oh. An hour later.